I'm a thinker, observer, the baddest man you ever heard of. All right, welcome back everyone to another episode of the 2020 Vision Podcast. I'm very excited for this episode as I have a special guest here with me today and her name is Kiana Bernard. Hello, Queen. Hi, I am so excited to be here. So my name is Kiana Bernard. Um, I'm a third year now at Hampton University. Um, My major is strategic communications and I'm double minoring in sociology and leadership studies um, from Cincinnati, Ohio. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here today and jumping on this episode with me. I know that this podcast has been about reaching out to different people and definitely trying to figure out, you know, getting out of comfort zones, allowing people to share what they um, have experiences of in college, and also talking about uh, different topics that are important also in your 20s. So, For today's uh, episode, we're going to be talking about, it's called Take It Easy, right? And so I think when we talk about college as a whole, we don't give ourselves enough space for self-care, right? And I know people look at self-care as simple things of going out, taking a walk, or going to a spa. But I think you have to think of self-care as like a psychological perspective of where you are understanding where your mental is at the current moment. And I mean, we can speak to a testament of our generation because I don't believe we value self-care as much as uh, we should. And going through the experiences that we went through through COVID and college as a whole, self-care was definitely not practiced. And I know me personally, I didn't take the time I needed for myself. And that affected my achievements, that affected my accomplishments, things that I was doing day to day, the um, amount of energy I was putting into things and all that aspect. So I just want to get start um, getting into the topic a little bit. In your opinion, what does self-care exactly mean to you? And how how do you personally incorporate self-care into your daily life? Yes, so that's a great question. I really agree with everything you said. Um, It's really a psychological mindset. And what's crazy about self-care for me is I didn't even really know what that was until I got to college. I didn't practice it. I mean, you know, I kind of probably saw it, you know, with my family. I'm sure my mom did it a little bit, my parents, but... I didn't truly know what self-care meant and what it actually was until I got to school because I feel like, like you said, we're doing everything, we're studying, you're involved in organizations and you're here for this and you have to be there at that event. It's like, it's hard to really find that time to take care of yourself and not just physically, but mentally. And I think, like you said, it's truly a mental thing it's a mental mindset you have to be making sure whatever i think i'm a huge person on like you know the things that you take in affect you mentally um so like just the mute the type of music you listen to it's as simple as that that is that can be a huge thing of self-care so every morning for me i mean i'm a christian girl i like to turn on my gospel that's okay. self-care for me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I started, whether that's Kirk Franklin, that's Tamala Man, we're putting on some gospel because I need, that's my self-care. That's putting me in the right mindset for the day. So that's starting off. That's a part of it. Another thing is I'm big on, you know, speaking into existence what my day is going to look like. So saying, Kiana, I mean, I know you're not feeling well, but let's have a good day. You know what I'm saying? Let's not let, I mean, things are going to come, but let's not let that bring us down. So speaking those affirmations, as you would say, I do believe in those positive ones. Speaking that into your day, speaking that on your life, speaking that into your friend's life, um, speaking that, speaking those into every situation. I believe that's all part of self-care every day. And just once you start doing those things on a, you know, and making that a part of your routine, that becomes part of your self-care and how you take care of yourself physically and mentally for me. Right. And I absolutely agree. You know, I one of the things that you said is like the whole mindset thing, you know, making sure that you are making it a priority first in your mind. And I think once you do that, you'll be able to say, like, once I think about it, I should be able to incorporate it into my daily life. And so 
people think about self-care as a whole, I think sometimes they don't think about how they can um, take the simplest things and make that a part of their journey, you know? Right. So be easily, you know, waking up every day and giving yourself a daily affirmation, like you said, or even finding like that awesome playlist to listen to to get your energy going. Yeah. Um, if you want to go outside and smell the flowers, go go smell the flowers. Go hey, smell them. You know, it's summertime. It's a really good time to be outside. Yeah. I know some days it's hot for my people who don't like hot weather, but if you really want to just go outside and enjoy nature, I actually recently have been going out to different gardens around um, the city and being a Richmond, being a Maryland, going to gardens has been like very peaceful for me. And I, uh-huh. I was one of those kids as a child, my mom would be like, Saturday morning, Sunday morning, we're gardening. Like that was the thing I had to do. And you know, I hated it, absolutely hated it. But as an adult, I appreciate why she did it because it was her hobby. That was something that truly made her happy. And she was trying to instill that into me also. And I think it's important that we talk about, you gotta find that one thing that clicks with you, that really gives you that, you know, normal um, consistency that you're looking for. And also, take a break you know it's okay to take a break and i think you know you were telling me this earlier is that when you don't take a break you allow yourself to get wrapped up in whatever's in your head and your head you know if you look at it from a visual image is literally like a ball of knots like everything is tied up together you're doing so much at one time and i think it's important for us as college students to take a break sometimes figure out you know what can be done first what can we save for later um you know time management work-life balance all that ties in that and so for um most of us you know we we talk about having self-care as a priority but i think even just having ourselves as a priority that's like the most important things i don't think a lot of people that i've run into or even have um, encountered in college they don't put themselves as a priority and i know me personally speaking i've literally sacrificed my time my energy for other people's stuff i have you know and i that wasn't healthy i had to tell myself like you have to put yourself first and i think that's very important in, the, in all of our journeys is that make sure that you're putting yourself first because when it's all said and done you don't want to look back and say wow i didn't really give myself any time to you know get some stress-free um relaxation in there or get away from um life's problems for a day or two so that's really important um, and so we want to say the next thing let's let's talk about the word burnout right and i i think a lot of people burn out very easily i know i did um uh, my last two years of college i burnt out a lot and (laughs) it's so funny because there was a gentleman at hampton that came to speak for a seminar and he talked about burning out he talked about making sure that you don't reach your last limit and he he's talking about um he went from new york to chicago to la to florida and he did that in the span of five days and he said by the end of it he actually ended up in the hospital because he was burnt out from everything that he was doing he was he's a lawyer so he was constantly traveling and practicing law and i think it's important to talk about burnouts because you can't you can't allow yourself to burn out like that that's not healthy for you it's not healthy for your mindset it's not healthy for what's going on so for you personally how do you avoid burnout and how do you um if you have reached that a level before in terms of stress how have you come back from it and you know try to like incorporate different things into it so again wesley i 100 percent agree and you know the crazy thing again is i have it experience these things until getting to college you know i had a little taste in high school because i was kind of involved and i was doing things but college is a whole nother level babe mentally and physically you already know so with burnout i had never truly experienced that i would say until this past my past sophomore year and I was doing everything, you know, I was involved and I was, you know, doing my academics and studying all the time. And I didn't, the crazy thing about burnout for me is you don't realize that you're getting burnt out until you're burnt out. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't even realize that you're stressing yourself out to this net, to this other level until you're already there and just about to fall out on the floor. So, for me i think it just started i was burnt i was burning out and it just started to weigh on me mentally i'm like 
why do I not want to do this anymore? And I used to just love doing this. Why do I not want to go hang out with my friends? I love my friends. Like it was just different things like that where I could just tell like I am getting burnt out. I had to take a mental pause. Right. So it happened with me and I hope, you know, this doesn't happen to anyone and people kind of just realize, you know, my parents ended up just having to come down because I was just so stressed out mentally and physically. I just, I felt like I just couldn't do it anymore. So I just want to tell people just, you know, realize those signs. If you start to feel like you just can't get up, you can't go through those daily things that you used to do anymore. And you know, that like, that's a sign of burnout. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's just like realizing those signs beforehand. Don't let it don't let it get to that next level because, you know, once you get there, you're already just past the point of over exhaustion and it's just too much. So that was me. And I don't want have you experienced that because it's just too much. Yeah, I mean, for sure. And I think I I hit it away so good that a lot of people didn't realize what was going on. Um, and it, I mean, it's so easy to just hide away stress and hide, you know, what you're going through. It's you can put on the biggest smile, you know, and people would not even have a clue what you're stressed about. And I not think a- that's why I appreciate it. Uh, Hampton did this event last year. Um, I forgot the name of it. It was uh, part of Men's Caucus collab uh, with Women's Caucus. And Oh, State of the Black Man. Um, and then I think they did the State of the... They're doing the State of the Black Woman. Uh, this, yeah. That completely changed my life. Like, I, I I didn't even realize how much I needed to hear from um, the older Black men who are in the real world experiencing stuff like this. How much I needed to hear from them saying that it's okay to not be okay. You know, and I... I think we go through these experiences in college. We're constantly doing, you know, we're doing them differently, obviously, and we have our different friend groups and have our different social spaces. But it's important to connect those also because sometimes you may be going through the same thing that somebody else is going through. Right. You know, have no idea that you might be able to connect with that person on that. I know there were people that I connected with throughout campus that were going through the exact same thing that I was feeling. We helped each other and we were able to get up from that uh, kind of stress and release it let it go um now you know no one is saying to you know just bury because obviously that's you know it's always going to be there but make sure that you are taking care of yourself and putting yourself as a priority um and practicing mindfulness too that's also uh something else that you have to practice you know whether for different people that might be spiritually, physically, religiously, um, you know, if you pray every single day, you know, making sure that you stay consistent with your prayer. I know I actually recently got connected um, to my church home again. I've, I've been out of the church home for a very long time, like before COVID. That was like a personal um, testament I had to get myself back on this summer because I was always consistent with prayer and always talking to God myself, but I felt like I wasn't doing any of his work, you know, to to deserve his blessings because my blessings came, but I also wanted to show him, you know, my, my grace. And, of and, course. and I think for me that this summer that was helping other people realize their potential and also helping um, others realize that if they're not okay, then talk to somebody, you know, see if there's someone that you can reach out to. Um, I know that most schools have a counseling center. Most schools have, you know, a space for you to be yourself and also just, you don't have to get deep and personal and, you know, tell all your business, but you can find somebody that you can relate to. And, you know, maybe if it's even, it doesn't have to be a peer, maybe it's an adult or, you know, maybe it's a family member. I just, you know, I really urge people throughout my college journey to reach out and really um, even, you know, and for anybody watching, if you honestly have something that you need to talk to, my, my phone number is on the website, honestly, and I will do my best to, you know, like I will do my best to make sure that they have all the outlets and the support they need. Uh, Cause it's important. Cause if you're, if you are fighting, alone then you're i feel like if you're fighting alone you're not fighting at all you know and that that, that's what i feel so i definitely agree uh with that and so uh this brings me to my last uh point of this topic is you're talking about you know self-care and the healthy practices that you do for self-care so in your personal opinion i know you talked about uh, listening to gospel music uh you know just getting out every once in a while what are some 
self-care practices that you feel like you can give to the the viewers to people who feel like you know they don't have an outlet for the things that they're going through what are some ways that simple ways that they can uh, maybe escape and get away uh, for a little bit so they feel like you know they have hope they have some kind of sensibility or they can make sense of whatever's going on if they feel like they're not comfortable enough yet to talk to somebody about it okay so that's a really good question for me if you feel like because you know what I will say this at first. I was one of those people who didn't like to talk about emotions, who didn't like to express my emotions. Like that definitely takes time. And I know everyone is right out the bat isn't, you know, good at that expressing themselves. And that's okay. You got to take your time. You got to be in tune with yourself first. Right. So for me, I've always journaled and I know that's like cliche, you know, all the therapists say that everybody says that, but for me, that has truly helped. Um, and this is just coming from a person again, like who never liked to express themselves. Like it took, I didn't even really like to tell my best friend how I'd be feeling, how I'd be going through it. Cause I just never liked to burden people. So journaling huge thing for me that was huge for me and I still do that I've been journaling since I was like let's say 13 years old I mean I used to I tell my friends now some juicy stuff in there I mean <laughs> I just love to journal it's a great way to get those feelings out and they're not you know out there in the open they're right there where you can secure them and keep them safe so I feel like that's a good way um exercise no. I mean, exercising is huge for me. I mean, girl, get in. I mean, I'll be telling my friends, get in the gym. Okay. You mad about your whoever get in the gym? Cause I know I run. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, that's for me. That's those have really helped. Yeah, that's, oh my goodness. Same gym has like completely brought me to a, a big, big memory because i like this summer was the first time that i ever um got like experience with the gym and actually started to um invest in myself with the gym and it has changed my life i'm not gonna lie um like i used to joke with uh i'm joking my mom this entire summer it was like i was like i needed therapy this whole time the gym is what i needed like i every emotion came out while i was in the gym like i felt like if i was angry go to get it in the gym sad go get in the gym even happy i would go and <laughs> got a major work and it, it's like the gym i think is a, a great outlet because it allows you to accomplish something bigger than you know yourself and also make personal goals so like for me going into the summer it was to just get healthier and I invested in, in my own health because I knew that that was affecting my mental life, the way that I was <clears throat> preparing myself as a person weight-wise and also um, being just a big black man in America, you know, that, that carries a lot of weight mentally. So I told myself, let me get in the gym, let me do this silently, of course, because we talk about doing, you know, things, we talk about doing the work, but not everything has to be spotlighted, you know, and people, when they see me, they're like, dang like you've been you know what I'm saying like you've been grinding out and I'm like yeah because that's that's therapy for me that's and I think it's important for people to highlight those different types of practices for them and I love what you said about writing also because I write all the time on um, I have something to write in a journal if I have something an idea a thought something that's just bothering me just write it out because I feel like once it leaves your head then you can get it out your system. And once you get out your system, it's not affecting you as bad. You know, you don't feel like you're carrying, even if it's something negative, you don't feel like you're carrying that burden anymore. And I think that's something that we, um, as a society, more importantly, within the black community, have to do better about, um, especially yeah. as HBCU students, because we are a majority on our world, but going out into the real world, we're a minority already. So, you yeah. know, with stuff like that in the real world, that's real hard to deal with. So definitely um, agree with you on that. But I really do, um, you know, want to champion to everybody that self-care is important. Um, knowing that you are not OK is important and you are trying your best to, you know, get any type of support. And I don't like the, the term help because I feel like help, you know, feels like there's a big issue. But getting support is a better term because I feel like you need support in this life. You know, I talk about all the time. Uh, my dad saying that life is a team sport because it is you cannot do this 
you can't do this alone. You need I, a village, honey. That's yeah. what I'm talking And maybe about. more, maybe two villages. That's what <laughs> I, I have three or four. So, yeah. Um, you yeah. Need a, honestly, it, it, you can't do this alone. And for the people that feel like they are doing it alone, reach out please and make sure that you are take putting yourself first taking care of yourself and putting the best interest for yourself at heart so but thank you so much kiana i really appreciate you jumping on this episode i know everyone's excited for um this whole season i know we have so much more to uncover um next episode we'll be talking about open book what it means to be an open book being open-minded and also have another special guest one that you might know miss bernard so definitely be excited for it but if you have last minute things you want to say or any advice you want to add um floor is yours oh my goodness well i just definitely want to say thank you thank you thank you for having me um this is definitely a new experience for me getting on here but i'm so grateful for you and just the space that you allowed me to have and just having this very very important conversation i'm so big on this i tell my friends at school like i'll just say this when she doesn't eat i'm on her like her mama because that's all it because you're not doing we're not doing that you know what i'm saying i'm quick to call it out and that's why i just want everybody to know like you were just saying please just realize if you're happy if you're recognizing signs and you're going through some things notice that now and just you know start to work on it now it's just so important because we're all gonna go through trials in life but like you said it's better when we go it through it together so definitely i'm just so glad we were able to have this conversation and i'm excited for these next episodes all right so i'm so excited but thank you again um and thank you to everyone that's watching this has been a refreshing um experience for me to be able to open up to anyone who's watching i mean i've even i've been out and about um crazy somebody I went to high school with um saw me at a grocery store the other day and was like i saw your podcast like this is crazy like I, I never even thought that that would be my wildest dreams and this is something that i had to gain the confidence to do and really experience um self-growth and knowing that maybe just maybe something that i say something that i do something that i promote might help change somebody's life so it really Mm -hmm. is a a bittersweet moment but thank you all for tuning in to this episode we have so much more in store to come and we'll see you on episode three all right bye